What's up, Happy Jimbo? Wednesday. I feel like we have to know what we're talking about because Jim's here today. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, glad you're here, Jim. Hopefully we'll get a couple other people. Maybe your mom will come again today. Yeah. So we are here today for First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're in the last part of that chapter. We're just doing verses 13 through 18. So it's not it's a lot of verses. verses, but anyway. Um, you got any highs and lows to share for today? Oh, jeez. Sorry, I'm putting you, you on the spot. spot. <laughs> Unless you want to do thankfuls. Do you want to talk about what you're thankful um, for today? <laughs> um, well, see, for today, there wasn't much that happened today. Oh, I, well, I... Can't, it's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say the trip to Lowe's yesterday, we got a bunch of stuff that we needed for yes. a couple products from the house. We are going to put like string lights over our deck, mm -hmm. you know, be kind yeah, of romantic. Nice. So we're looking forward to doing that. So we, so we went to Lowe's we and spent probably more money than we should have yesterday. But and I some think, gardening things. I think we have everything we need to do that project now. So. Except the salt, the, the salt, the sand. Sand. Um, I sent in a message to Chris. He said to get Not a different right kind of sand. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, we're doing this project. We're like, we're looking forward to it. Just something small that I think will make the back house look yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So, anyway, um, all right. Do you want to pray us in and then we'll sure. read the scripture? Uh, God, thanks so much for this time. I pray that we can honor you with our uh, words and thoughts and deeds. God, I thank you for this time for the to these for these verses to read. I pray that you can speak to us. That you can. Uh, uh, give us something through these scriptures uh, to take with us into the next days and weeks ahead. It's your son's name, pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, so where I have again? an idea. Okay. <laughs> um, I was thinking because it's not that long. Um, you could read it first in NIV, and then I'll read the same verses okay. again in L NLT. Because I don't know. I just I, could do I keep going back to that um, version for some of these things just because I feel like. It just makes it look at he found this little this tiny little Bible. He's like, I got an NLT right here. <laughs> it's like this thing used to go in the back like of my motorcycle. You need a microscope to read the you words read that this. are on there. Anyway, I'm gonna let you read this you, is NLT. I'll I got it over here. I'm good. Okay. So anyway, first Thessalonians chapter four, thirteen through eighteen. Thirteen through eighteen. NIV. Gonna, here we go. Go for it. Brothers, do we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise, will rise first. After that, we who are, caught, uh, or who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to read the same thing, but in NLT. So I said this because... I noticed that when I was reading this, you know, sometimes I'll study it in different versions. Obviously, the subheadings are going to be a little bit different. But for the NIV, it says the coming of the Lord. And then the NLT says the hope of the resurrection. I feel like usually, I mean, not that it's completely different, but I feel like usually it has mostly the same words. But I just thought that was interesting. When I was like a first becoming a Christian, when I was like first learning about what Christianity was, mm -hmm. I remember being told, and this kind of like sunk into my head. I don't know how true it is or whatever. That the words that the, the titles of all the scriptures are just like, you know, that's not really the divine stuff that like God. No, man wrote that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But it, yeah, I, I feel like know. it's a good summary, so like I take that summary for too it. seriously so, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So I just thought that was interesting to note. But the hope of the resurrection is the subheading for this one. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. So you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. 
then tomorrow together with them, not tomorrow, <laughs> we who are still alive and remain on <clears throat> earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. So um, what did you write down for the big idea? What did you feel like? So my big idea was, uh, I wrote it down and I scratched it out and I wrote it again. And I scratched it out. I had a hard time. <laughs> yeah, I wrote, um, it's okay to be confused. God will provide answers for you or he'll send someone to help you figure it out. Okay. I said, mine is nothing like what you wrote. I wrote that it was mostly about, I said, Jesus will come back to the earth one day. And when he does, he will reunite all the believers. Okay. I, I wrote my 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 big idea kind of read into it a little more because yes that's that's exactly what the verses were mm -hmm. saying but why were they saying those things because they were confused and didn't understand gotcha <laughs> that so if you died yeah, context. yeah so okay so the next thing we're going to do we talk about the big idea and then each one of us read ahead of time and we picked out a verse that stood out to us and we'll tell you why we picked it and then how we can apply that verse to our lives so what, what did you pick? Am I go first. Yeah, I, want you to go first. I had a hard time picking out a verse. <laughs> um, I almost didn't pick out one verse, but I will pick out. Um, can you go to Corinthians 15? First sure. Corinthians 15. Um, so I picked out verse 14. Uh, let's see here. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that. Wait, God... you picked 15? No, I asked you to go to. Oh, chapter sorry. 15. You. First Corinthians 14. chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you want me to read? In a moment. I'll oh, give you okay. some verses. <laughs> I chose verse 14 in Thessalonians. Okay. That's what I was asking. <laughs> we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And we also, and we, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So these guys actually thought the, the, the Thessalonians were confused. They thought that, well, if you died before Jesus came back, then how are you going to get to right. go up with him? You right. know? And, um, you know, so he was talking about, um, that with these folks it said death and resurrection death and death and resurrection is like the linchpin to the, the christian faith right. uh, which is really interesting and and that is emphasized in um first corinthians chapter 15 verse 14 mm -hmm. it says and if christ has not been raised our preaching is useless and so so is your faith and then um 17 through 22 in the same chapter. Yeah. Okay. It says, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. Yeah. I mean, you can keep going, but that's why you don't have to. So, and falling asleep there is dead. And that's what they're talking about here. Yeah. So people that have fallen asleep, it's it's their way of saying they're dead. And, you know, in the verse before, they're like, well, how do we, you know, they thought they might, they, they, those people had no hope because they were already gone. But that's mm -hmm. not necessarily true. And, you know, going back to my big idea of um, it's okay to be confused, right? Like, I remember when I first became a Christian, I was reading I, I was reading the Bible like a fire hose. Mm -hmm. Like, I was really interested. And I was asking lots of questions to the dude that, like, you know, turned me on towards Jesus and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that happens. You know, that's, that's the Thessalonians, you know, right now. Because right. they're all relatively new, relatively new, probably within a year or so. Mm -hmm. I don't know, actual time frames. And so they're, you know, they're confused and they're looking for questions and they're looking for answers. And like, you know, I think about things that I still don't really know. Like, for example, end time theology, you right. know, es eschatology. eschatology. You know, I don't know what's going to freaking happen. It's, and that's it's okay. confusing. I don't know. Right. I mean, I've read, I've read the books. I've read, right. I've read Revelations and I've read Daniel. Mm -hmm. I've read these things, but I won't know unless I'm here to see it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, you know, also like when you die like that. I believe I know what happens when I die, but unless I, until I die, mm -hmm. that's when I will know right. <laughs> what actually happens. Right. And so, and like, it's so important to, to have a relationship with God because I could die alone um, in my bed. And if no one's there, then I can at least, you know, God can walk me through that. You know, it'd be nice if I could, if, if Rachel could hold my hand while I, while I pass from this life to the next or something, you know, but that may not happen. And it's important to have a relationship with Christ because we might be alone, <laughs> you know, when that, when that day comes. And yeah. so, um, who can he can help uh, get you through that? And then that's it. That's I have my observations for verse fourteen. So your application um, is what is something I'm confused about, and I can ask God to clarify for me. Yes. Because these that. guys were confused, mm -hmm. and Paul stepped in and helped to clarify. Yeah. yeah. They may not have known that they were wrong. <laughs> so that's true. Right. Yeah, I might not know that I'm wrong about something, mm -hmm. right? But um, that doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there were a couple things that, you know, it was, it was a small amount of verses here, but there are a couple things. You already pointed out one of them um, as I was reading. So I actually picked verse 13 where they talk about those who fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And so they don't mean they're sleeping, right? right. It, um, they, there's other places in the Bible where they reference falling asleep. Like Lazarus, they said the same thing, but he, he was dead, right? So yeah. when they're talking about falling asleep here, they're not talking about sleeping person died. So that's why I pulled up the NLT because it, it, it uses different words here. So in NIV, it says brothers, Verse 13 says, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. So in NLT, it says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. So you will not grieve like people who have no hope. So I pulled out that verse for several reasons. It says um, believers who died. Read that again in NLT. The, the whole verse? Yeah, yeah, the first half. Um, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. Okay. So I picked that out because, um, you know, you, you men mentioned like the end times, right? Like, I don't really know what's going to happen. There's so, you know, it's a hotly debated thing when people <laughs> revel read Revelation yeah. about what, what's really going to happen at the end. You know, we don't know. You know, we can make guesses about what we think. Right. And there are people who have really studied this and they can't agree on, you know, on something and people have their theories on it. But um, I wrote down, I don't want to get caught up in the how or when it will happen. Right. So we know it's going to happen one day. But the reason I picked this verse was because I feel like the focus of this verse is that um, the how or the when doesn't really matter. But the part in here that says, um, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. So I wanted to focus on that per that part of the verse um, and use it as an encouragement in our life, right? So the, the part here they're talking about is we want to do this and have hope, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, want, we want to cling to that hope that God's going to come or one day and, or, and uh, we're going to have a better place to be. So it doesn't, the how and the when don't really matter, but as believers, we should have that hope in Christ that... We're going to go to heaven one day. So um, I said, um, it's hard to wrap our heads around when someone passes away. You know, a lot of times, and you've said before, if, if someone passes away, like you don't always know what to say to that person, mm -hmm. um, especially if they start to ask you questions. You've had that experience before as a believer where someone who's not a believer has asked you questions and it kind of puts you on the spot. Like, what do you really say? Um, but I feel like this these verses should be something that can give us hope and, and a place to direct someone saying, you know, this is, this is where I'm going to go, <laughs> you know? Um, and then I wrote down, you know, a verse that a lot of people are familiar with revelation 21, four, he will wave away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain um, for the order of things has passed. So um, that's revelation. Yeah. So that's in revelation. So these verses should give us hope in, in what's to come and it should encourage us and that when things are tough while we're here on earth that we we have something to cling to so i wrote down for my application when things are tough or i'm dealing with loss that i should remember that it's just temporary it is right? temporary everything so, so that's what i wrote down Even the most permanent things in our lives are temporary yeah. yeah so so that's what i got out of that um and then i wrote down a quote from um the first five app that I used to read from mm -hmm. sometimes um, the person that was writing up something about these verses, she, she said, is there a better remedy for a troubled heart than to remember Jesus himself will come and get us. Is there a better remedy for a troubled heart than to remember Jesus is going to come get us. We'll come get us. Right. So this whole, all these verses are about like, Jesus is going to come back and get, get us one day. If yeah. we're still here when that happens or if we're in our graves, you know, and, and it's interesting enough. And, um, Jim's here too, that, you know, I read this and, you know, at our church, when, when we've studied the Bible, you know, mentors have told us what it, what do these verses say to you? Because they might say something to you and you might get something out of it and I might get something different out of it. But our friend Jim is saying, you know, well, what does the scripture say? not what does it say to you. And as I read this, 
And they talked about, I'm getting a little bit off topic here and not specifically my, my verse that I picked out, but um, they're talking about coming back and like getting the bodies and getting bodies out of the grave. And then I started to think, I said to myself, In you this know, section of time? Mm -hmm, yeah. So um, let's see, where does it say it? The dead will rise in Christ first. Right. So for the Lord himself will come down from the heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So he's going to get the dead out of their graves mm -hmm. and then the people that are still here. And then I was like, wait a minute. I wonder. And then I did look it up because I, I thought this was true. And I had asked you this when I was reading but I didn't tell you why I was asking it. Um, I said, I bet you that the Jewish don't cremate people. Mm -hmm. And so I looked that up and it is true because this is what the scripture says. So how could he come back and get their body? How can he come back and get my body if I'm dead and I'm cremated and my body's not there anymore? I mean, I'm sure that God will find a way to work it out, but I just, I had a different lens on it thinking about what does the scripture say? So yeah, that's not, yeah. I, when you when you when you said that just now, I was thinking about the Holocaust and stuff mm -hmm. and how all those millions of Jews that were cremated, right? <laughs> then they wouldn't have to, they wouldn't right. have wanted to be cremated. God will you know? work it all out. Be but, murdered, at least don't cremate. Right, me. but that's something that um, that if you're Jewish, yeah. that's a, that's a no no. So anyway, I I just love the words that um, that first five app said. Is there a better remedy for a troubled heart than to remember Jesus Himself will come and get us? He's going to come get us if we're here. He's going to come get you out of your grave. Yes. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> so anyway. <clears throat> and then did you write a prayer down? My prayer or did was. did you already read it? Make me humble enough to know what I need help with. That's a good one. Yeah. I said, God, help me to put my hope in you. All right. That's it. Simple prayer. It's sometimes hard to do. Yes. When things are tough. Yes, when, so. when when it's on me to go do something, <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just go do it than <laughs> ask God to anyway, leave me somewhere. Um, there's a couple of folks here. If you guys had a verse that stood out to you, you guys can type <clears> it in the chat. Next week, let me look up what we're going to yeah, do Yeah, I think we're week. splitting chapter 5 we're and We're splitting half. up chapter 5, so if you wanted to read ahead of time, give me a moment. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Jim and probably my mom. <laughs> All right, so next week we're doing 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, which I should have guessed by. That. So um, so if you want to read ahead and join us next week, that's what we'll be doing. And uh, that's all we got for you. So unless anybody else has anything to say, thank you, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Jim. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> should be fun. Yeah. Do you want to pray us out? Yeah, sure. God, okay. thanks so much for... Um, for this uh, for this class and for this time to to just read the word and to to think about what it is that you want us to take from it, God. I thank you for um, this this platform and this this ability to speak. I thank you for people that would uh, that would listen, and I pray God that you would work in their hearts, that you would grow us all closer to you. We thank you so much, and it's your Son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Um, we hope you have a great night, and hopefully we'll see some of <clears> you guys next week. All right, take care, guys. Wait, Bye. wait, click that, and then <laughs> okay, say guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.